So this is week 70 of our weekly discussions. And we're going to discuss today this topic of taking control and trusting God. What do I mean by that? But first, let me just share what this group's about. Uh, we are Christians in the effective altruism movement. So effective altruism is a movement. And by that, it's really two things, an idea and a community focused on using evidence and careful reasoning to figure out the very best ways to improve the world and then to act on that basis. And the question that will guide today's discussion is really, is EA for, for control freaks who can't trust God? And uh, is there some kind of tension here between using uh, rationality and reason uh, and also relying on, on a God who Christians understand to be all-knowing uh, and who Christians often pray to uh, when we don't know the answers, right? Is there a tension here? And is EA for Christians who, to the extent that it's for Christians, is it for quote-unquote control freaks? Uh, in fact, this is a question that, that Dominic raised in a recent blog, uh, and I thought it was really interesting. I don't know how many of us have read that blog, but uh, a lot of this discussion is going to curtail off of that. And if you want to see that blog, there's a link to it in the Facebook invitation to this event in the Christians and Effective Altruism uh, Facebook group. As a quick roadmap, first, let's outline the tension that, uh, that we're talking about here, and then look at some biblical passages on surrender, especially ones that Dominic's, Dominic raised, before looking at some Christian EA rationales for surrender, uh, and then addressing some challenges uh, or some some potential questions or problems that arise uh, with, with this topic. So to be more specific, I wanna quote Dominic, and he says that there's an overarching mindset behind the EA project. Be deliberate about the shape of your altruism rather than going with the intuitive flow and rather than taking current forms of expressing altruism as given. Step outside the ingrained altruistic habits and embrace intentionality in choosing how to serve others. You are in charge of actively optimizing its effects across any cause areas and across any resources. Don't let things happen. If you don't take responsibility for every detail of your altruism, no one will. And this is sort of, yeah, again, the, the one interpretation of the overarching mindset behind the EA project, which is of course a very broad project, but perhaps uh, this, this does or does not uh, ring true to you when you think about EA's approach. And then Dominic continues. He says, in contrast, Christianity allows us, it demands of us, not to take control of everything we can affect. We are to let go of the hold we seek to have on everything and put things into God's hands. The mindset is one of surrender to God's mysterious and powerful presence in this world. Is there any way we could make a sticker for the pizza expo? One second here. Let me uh, make sure everyone's on mute for a second. Uh, I think it's I think it's better now. Thank you. Um, so yeah, again, the mindset is one of surrender to God's mysterious and powerful presence rather than acting like an engineer who fine tunes every button on a big complex machine, we ought to espouse the mindset of children trusting their parents to lead them well. And while EA encourages us to take control of things, Christianity encourages us to let go of control. And this tension has increased in recent years and lockstep with the increase of humanity's power to control its fate. So next, let's look at some biblical passages that support this, this Christian perspective of surrendering control or surrendering plans and action. One that comes to mind is the passage in the Old Testament we read about in the book of Judges, where Gideon is commanding God's armies uh, against his enemies. And Gideon has over 30,000 men um, at, at his disposal. Uh, he has quite a lot of resources here. Uh, but God asks Gideon to do something seemingly irrational, to go to war with just 300 men instead of 32,000. And uh, if I recall the story right, uh, it, it succeeds phenomenally uh, in ways that it maybe wouldn't have uh, if Gideon just trusted on his own strength uh, and they do win the battle. There's another passage in, in Matthew, uh, which is known to I think many or maybe all of us, 
where Jesus tells us not to worry about tomorrow for each day uh, has enough troubles of its own and uh, to look at the flowers of the field, right? They don't, they don't toil or, or spin, but God takes care of them. And, and also the birds of the air and, and God will take care of us uh, even when we don't uh, worry or, or um, yeah, even if we don't worry about ourselves. There's another passage and uh, another story in the Old Testament, many stories actually about this theme, but one, one really important one is, is the story of the Exodus, uh, where we repeatedly see God telling Israel and telling Moses that, that he will fight on their behalf. Uh, they need only to be still. There are also many commands in the Psalms where uh, the, the psalmist reminds us that the Lord knows all human plans and he knows that they are futile. We read also in James of people who, um, of who talk about how they will, they will say what they'll do next year or this year and how much money they'll make. And, um, and instead, James says, it's better if we say, if the Lord wills it, right? Um, because God holds in his hand uh, the, the plans uh, of, of our lives. And there are many other, many other passages we could talk about in the breakout rooms. So I welcome us to, to add to this list. So I haven't totally defined what this surrender means, but um, just continuing with some of Dominic's points, I want to I, I want to just raise some some quick points that could could be rationales for a Christian EA for um, embracing this this mindset of surrender. The first is that maybe God has some epistemic advantages. Maybe there are things that God knows that we don't know, uh, and that by trusting God, uh, there are ways that we are um, trusting um, a higher a higher knowledge in a way that is rational. Maybe there's also something to this division of labor argument, uh, which goes something like uh, humans aren't tasked with saving the whole world, even if we are tasked with doing a tremendous amount of good. Um, I know Dominic takes the approach where, um, or at least he writes about this approach in his blog, where um, we, we, might, we might have some um, responsibility for um, ensuring that, that, that people are um, relieved of extreme suffering. Uh, we don't have the responsibility to provide bliss for humanity. That's something uh, that's in God's domain. Uh, and he hints at the idea of maybe existential risks fall into this category, where maybe this is part of God's um, portfolio, if you will, for doing good in the world, where God will will ensure that um, we don't see some kind of existential catastrophe, uh, even if uh, it's still human uh, duty to be concerned with um, with let's just say lower sea catastrophe or even major humanitarian crises. There's another rationale that goes something like, um, well, an, an attitude of surrender corrects uh, our hubris and our overambition. If we think about uh, our tendency, uh, especially if for us uh, type A's uh, to, to, to solve all the world's problems and to solve uh, every problem in our life and to be, um, to be the savior of ourselves and to be the savior of our world. Uh, when, we, when we look at this Christian attitude of surrender, it just reminds us that we are not all powerful. And um, there are things that are outside of our control. And uh, this, is, this is something that, that would maybe even be better for the world if we, um, if we realize this and if we um, correct it for our, for our hubris. But also surrender isn't just about external outcomes, but, but internal outcomes. Maybe the surrender that, that scripture talks about um, is, is about building character and building trust and virtue, uh, building a trust in God, which is something that a Christian EA would, would highly value, right? This is perhaps the most valuable thing um, or a key component to, to welfare is having a, a trusting relationship with God. So some quick challenges I want to raise. One, what does an attitude of surrender actually mean for EA themes like effective giving and socially impactful careers? Uh, do we mean that um, we're going to just surrender to um, to whatever the consequences of our donations are and just give to wherever it feels good? 
I don't think that's what Dominic was getting at in his article. Um, but one upshot would be that surrender does mean continuing to pray to God, uh, even if we don't understand how those prayers will be answered. Uh, surrender could mean when we give, not just thinking before we give and doing research before we give, but praying before we give and remembering that um, we might plant the seed and somebody else might water, but it's God who gives the growth and uh, that God is still working in and through um, our effective charity and our effective giving uh, to do good in the world in ways we might, might not even understand. This might also mean, um, this might also mean just trusting God uh, and making commitments uh, to, to, to do things for the world. Also things that are motivated by our Christian faith, uh, by, our, by our trust in God, um, a God who we might not have 100% certainty exists, but a God who we believe uh, is there and a God who we are willing to trust. We make the choice to trust um, and we surrender our, our um, constant searching uh, in, in choice of, um, of a commitment to, to God and to goodness. Another challenge might be this paradox of surrender um, and free will, right? So we can ask how much can we really control and how much does God control? Uh, are we, to what extent are we limited in our, in our free will? And I don't have anything meaningful to add to this, uh, millennium long debate. Uh, this of course is add on, uh, point doesn't matter how much we can control. Um, some people say, yes, it, it matters completely. Like if we, if we can't control anything, then it just all falls into some kind of nihilistic world. Um, whereas others will say, well, even if, God does have providence over everything. We still have a duty to follow um, what's what's optimal and what's good. There's this one quote that Dominic raised in his blog, which is, pray as though everything depended on God, act as though everything depended on you. I thought that was, that was um, helpful. And one final challenge. Given how much we can control, or I would, I would, I would posit we, we can control through our effective donations uh, in the Christian imperative to plan and to act as well, not, not just to surrender, but also to, to make plans and to use our minds. Is an act of surrender still helpful for Christians in yay? And in what, in what way is that, is that true? Here are some questions. I'm gonna post these in the discussion. I welcome you to, um, to talk about these in your groups. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much for, for listening to this and um, hope this was at least a little bit helpful.